Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Network Engineer Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on top 10 VLAN interview question and answers part 2. So in part 1, we have already seen question number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, so let's start with question number 6. So the question number 6 is, what is the range of VLAN? So guys, uh, total VLANs are 4096 so the range of the vlan is starts from 0 to 4095 so this is the range of the vlan uh, but this vlan 0 and vlan 4095 this are reserved vlan you cannot use this vlan these are reserved vlan whereas vlan 1 is a default vlan uh, from vlan 2 to VLAN 1001 this is the normal range of the VLAN and this is actually the usable VLAN we can say from VLAN 1002 to 1005 these are reserved for token ring and FDDI VLANs whereas VLAN 1006 to 4094 this is the range of extended vlan so this is extended vlan ranged so this can be asked like a different question also in your interview that what is uh, the range of extended vlans so the extended vlans range that is the extended vlan starts from 1006 to 4094 and this extended vlans are particularly used by service providers to allow provisioning of new vlans so guys this question is uh, uh, you know you have to just remember uh, this this particular uh, range of the vlans and uh, you know uh, mostly you know this question is asked uh, maybe for people who have experience of about uh, you know one year or two year maybe freshers so you know you can just go and just remember uh, this particular range of this VLANs. This is a basically scenario based question. Uh, so this question says that consider a scenario where two switches switch 1 and switch 2 are connected to each other. Dot 1 Q trunk is configured on switch 1 native VLAN is not specified whereas on switch 2 native VLAN is configured as VLAN 2 what will happen. So um, if you are if you have you know appeared for this uh, interviews you might have now understood that a lot of times when scenario based questions are asked so i thought of introducing this very commonly asked scenario based question so here uh, we have like this two switches switch one and switch two okay so i'll just draw switch one and switch two and also i'll draw users for this switch one and also a user for this switch now a trunk is configured between these two switches that is good now dot one q is used for this trunk that is very good so this on the switch one uh native vlan is not specified so native vlan guys is nothing but uh, the default vlan which is vlan one so here the native vlan is vlan one and uh, on switch two the native vlan is configured as vlan two now let's say this PC and this PC, they both are the members of the native VLAN of their respective switches. So let's say this is a sender and this is a receiver. Okay. Now when this PC is going to send some traffic on this switch, okay, this switch will send it on this trunk port. Now this is native VLAN that is VLAN 1. Now uh, we have learned from this uh, previous uh, question that uh, where, we, where we discuss about the dot uh, uh, one q and ISL difference that a tag is inserted. Now this tag is nothing but the VLAN information. Now the behavior is that on dot one q whenever dot one q is there the traffic for the native VLAN goes untagged that is the frame will be sent untagged there will be no tag inserted so whenever this frame is received on this particular port of the switch 2 
it will think that okay the traffic the frame is untagged that means it will belong to vlan 2 which is the native vlan so it will forward that traffic to this vlan 2 pc so what is happening a frame which is sent by a sender in vlan 1 is received by a receiver which is in vlan 2 now this kind of thing is vlan hopping this is known as vlan hopping which is okay this is going to happen it's vlan hopping so what will happen the answer to this question is that you will receive basically you know uh, you will receive a native vlan mismatch error whenever you do such stuff so guys this is a bit a scenario based question and such questions can be asked in the interview so the question I'll just mention your native vlan mismatch question number eight vtp what is vtp and its mode so guys this vtp is nothing but uh, vlan trunking protocol basically this is an optional uh, configuration uh, and uh, this basically provides just mention this thing over here centralized vlan capability so when we talk about centralized vlan capability that means it allows us for creation deletion and modification of where we have a centralized control of doing it i'll explain you or you can also explain in the same way to the interviewer that let's say there's a smaller network okay in an organization let's say there's a smaller network only a uh, few switches are there let's say there were only four switches okay and uh, small network okay there are only four switches now to configure let's say i have to configure uh, um, villain 20 on this in this organization so i can do it simply by configuring a switch one then switch two switch three switch four this is very easy stuff you can do it very easily on four switches okay but let's say there's a there's a big organization where you have uh, 400 switches and again the same work of configuring vlan 20 on this all the switches 400 switches it is the manual efforts will be more uh, you know 400 switches it's not possible to configure go manually and configure on this 400 switches so this is a very difficult work so to reduce this thing or to make it easier you know this is introduced that is vtp so vtp basically uh, we can configure let's say vlan 20 on this particular switch and this vlan 20 once it is configured on one switch it will be replicated on remaining 399 switches so this is how you can explain it very easily where uh, where the interviewer will also understand you that you know the concept of of vtp so the one liner answer will be that centralized vlan management so when we say that centralized vlan vlan management that is we can create uh, we can as it is i told you that when i create vlan 20 on this switch it will be replicated so if let's say if i delete vlan 10 then it will be also deleted on all the switches okay so vlan whenever we say vlan management capabilities means we can manage the vlans from a centralized location that is the switch over here so that is the reason why we are mentioned as centralized vlan management capability now there are various modes in this vtp uh, basically there are three modes server mode client mode and transparent mode so the server mode is a default mode so by default uh, when we talk about a default thing the switch is by default in the server mode so let's say this is a switch in the server mode so on this switch when the switch is in the server mode we can create modify and delete vlan okay so this is very simple you have the access the admin can go and create delete or modify any vlans now uh, this is where the difference we can explain in such a way uh, that uh, you know 
it is it can send and forward the VTP advertisement. So you can draw just one switch. Maybe you can draw another switch, which is in the server mode. So let's say this is also in the server mode. So if if let's say I can I can delete, create, and modify the VLANs over here. I can delete, create, modify VLANs over here. Let's say there's another server switch. I can also delete, create, and modify VLANs over here. Now let's say I've I have added some created some VLAN over here. Now this information is going to be sent to this server switch okay it's going to send to this switch to this server switch now this server switch can forward this information to the another switch now this information is known as the vtp advertisements vtp advertisements so i've mentioned over here that whenever the switch is in the server mode it can send okay this switch is sending and this switch is receiving and forwarding it to the another switch so this is what is mentioned in this point and also it gets synchronized with the vlan information now let's say this is a vtp advertisement now this include the information that create vlan 10 so this is going to create vlan 10 and also this switch is going to also going to create vlan 10 so this is basically the the behavior whenever the switch is in the server mode and uh, uh, this particular configuration or in this mode this vlan configuration basically goes in the nvram that is the startup configuration of the switch so also remember this point that since it have the capability of creating modifying and deleting uh, vlan so the in, so the vlan configuration will get saved in the nvram that is the startup configuration of the switch now uh, the client mode now in the client mode you know the, the the switch do not have the access to create or modify or to delete vlans so uh, let's say this is a server okay server switch and this is a client switch or let's say again this is a server switch and let's say this is a client switch now now on this client switch you cannot create delete or modify any vlans on server you can do so fine now let's say we created some vlan and this information is sent via vtp advertisement to this server uh, server switch this server switch will also forward it to the via vtp advertisement to this client client mode client mode switch now this client mode switch will get sync with this information that is let's say here we have created vlan 20 so here also vlan 20 will be created on client also vlan 20 will be created and also the client here let's say another switch is added the client also will forward that information forward that vtp advertisement to another switches so in this mode also uh, we can we actually get sync that particular switch in the client mode gets sync and it also forwards the vtp advertisement same as the server mode the only difference is that in server mode we can create delete or modify the vlans and in client modes we cannot do that so since we cannot do that so the vlan configuration is not saved in the nvram that is in the startup configuration the vlan configuration is not saved in the startup configuration of the switch since we, we do not we, we cannot create delete or modify the vlans in the client mode now question number nine what are the requirements for vtp messages to exchange between two switches now let's say there are two switches this is a this is a switch and let's say this is switch one this is switch two so what is the what are the requirements of vtv message to be exchanged between the uh, between these two switches so the requirement is that the link between the two switches should be trunk okay so this is requirement number one the another requirement is the domain name configured on both the switches should be same that is the domain name is uh, the, the domain name should be the same means basically whenever you configure vtp you know this there's a domain name which need to be specified uh, so which actually mentions the domain uh, vtp domain which that switch belongs so let's say there's a domain name configured on this switch let's say a domain name is configured as amar so the here also Let's say I configured the domain name as uh, Amar. You know, the VTP messages won't be exchanged because this domain name is case sensitive. So I have to mention 
all the letters in capital since I have mentioned this on switch one. So it is basically case sensitive. So uh, this is a very important point that the domain name is case sensitive. So once there belongs to the same a domain name, then only the VTP messages will be exchanged. Now this password, if there's some password set to that VTP domain, then again that password should match on both the switches. But again, this password is optional thing. So this is question number 10, which is the last question. And according to me, guys, I'll say this is the most important question of this video. What is VTP pruning? So guys, VTP pruning is a feature of Cisco switch, which stops VLAN update traffic. VLAN update, VLAN update information traffic from being sent down trunk links if the updates are not needed. So to explain this question, you can draw this topology. I always do that. Uh, three switches. Fine. And configure the trunk. So this is trunk, this is trunk and this is trunk. Now this three switches belongs to let's say to an a VTP domain and in this VTP domain VLAN 100 is configured. Now this switch one have few ports in VLAN 100, switch two also have few ports in VLAN 100. But this switch, switch three have no ports in VLAN 100. This have no ports in VLAN 100. Now since it have no ports in VLAN 100, the this switch will not require any information, update information related to VLAN 100. So what VTP pruning is do that it will it will stop sending this information VLAN 100 update information on this trunk links. So this is the feature of VTP pruning. Now what is the advantage of that? It will help in increasing the available bandwidth by reducing the unnecessary flooded traffic because it is not required only on this trunk. Since on switch three there is no port in VLAN 100. Now let's say later on some port is added in VLAN 100. Okay, let's say this port is now added in VLAN 100. What VTP will do is it will uh, VTP will dynamically add the VLAN back to this trunk link. So it will it will add VLAN 100 over here and VLAN 100 over here on this trunk link. So guys, this is the feature of, of VTP. So whenever this question is asked, we can go with this particular diagram and answer the answer this question. So I'll stop here in this video. I hope that this video is informational guys to you all. I've made this video in two parts. You can go and watch both this part. If you have not watched part one, go and watch part one as well. So I'll stop here till then. Bye. Thanks and have a nice day. 